Until you can see digital asset data alongside traditional finance data, the usability is very limited. Mm -hmm. But what if you had DeFi staking or some sort of digital asset or even Bitcoin mm -hmm. held in a digital wallet or held on, held on Coinbase mm -hmm. and you could actually be able to see that data from an investment standpoint and then fintechs mm -hmm. um, can actually use that data to make crediting and underwriting decisions. Mm -hmm. Here we are with Amy Fisher from Plaid. Amy, it's so great to have you on The Defiant. Welcome. Thank you, Camila. Great to be here. All right, so I think Plaid is such an interesting one for, for blockchain. Um, so Plaid is financial infrastructure, and blockchain should really disrupt the company or even replace it. So how was it that Plaid started to look into ways to incorporate blockchain, and how are you incorporating crypto and blockchain into the business? Great question. It was actually the question that I had when Plaid first reached out to me mm -hmm. uh, about coming over. I'd been in the blockchain space. I was working at a company called R3, powering uh, blockchain use cases for banks, for enterprises. And what I was finding while I was at R3 was there's a, a, a massive user onboarding challenge and a, a large adoption problem. There are a lot of things that need to happen in the space in order to drive the technology and the adoption forward. I will also say that I come from this from a technology standpoint, not necessarily picking one horse or one, one chain to, to ultimately win. Mm -hmm. I, I think you know, from the Plaid perspective, Plaid started uh, specifically in the United States as a way to aggregate consumer data for the over 12,000 US banks that exist. This mm -hmm. extended to Canada and to the EU, and it connects via APIs and SDKs, uh, consumers to have uh, ownership and visibility into their bank accounts. I will say that uh, it has grown into many use cases since then, identity verification, mm -hmm. um, as well as fraud, fraud risk and insights into these consumer data because Plot is a very broad network. What is really interesting and organic about this is that I, I think that Plaid uh, sits at Web 2.5. So mm -hmm. while I was very early in Web 3, even before we were calling it Web 3, it was DLT, it was blockchain, um, there are pieces of the puzzle that I think uh, can better best be solved by working together via partnership via Web 2 companies and Web 3 companies. It also helps with network adoption. So mm -hmm. how, and, and really the way that Plaid ended up in this space was that uh, the market, so centralized exchanges, crypto customers, uh, like bridges on and off ramps, started to use the account linking tools that Plaid provides, the endpoints via API, mm. to be able to, to do things like account funding or mm. fraud risk. And one of the things that I, I talk about a lot internally, um, when you're looking at the LLMs that power some of our fraud products, uh, oftentimes, crypto companies or anything having to do with blockchain um, can be the canary in a coal mine, um, mm. as, as they say, where it's like it's a very good, uh, it, you can gain very and garner very good insights from the ecosystem um, itself to be able to actually use that and transpose that into other Web2 use cases. So it's a variety of data. But I would say, mm. you know, uh, from the standpoint of blockchain native, use cases, Plaid's not going so far as to do that. Mm -hmm. Plaid is very focused on uh, empowering the consumer to be able to see their, their data wherever that lives. And to the extent that it's in a crypto wallet or it's on chain, we have the tools and the technology to be able to bring that to the consumer. Okay, so um, is it that Plaid is looking for ways to um, increase access Exactly. For, for like blockchain information, which is so hard to to kind of uh, decrypt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, it's not even about blockchain specifically. Pla Plaid's mm -hmm. mission is to unlock financial freedom for everyone, yeah. right? So sure. it's about financial access. Mm -hmm. I actually think blockchain has a really great story mm -hmm. and a great mission behind it too. Kind of the ethos of that ecosystem mm -hmm. is also unlocking financial access. Mm -hmm. Plaid started from a very US-centric place where blockchain adoption you often see coming from other parts of the world who don't have access to digital assets like the dollar. So, mm -hmm. so it's very, very interesting. But I, I absolutely think the two can coexist. We certainly see in terms of volumes, things exist. And the way that technology evolves is not always as quickly as we mm -hmm. would like. And, mm -hmm. and to be able to power bridges, power on-ramps and off-ramps, ultimately the fiat 
needs to come from somewhere to be mm -hmm. able to, to go on chain. And that's just one of the, the ways that we've seen um, Plaid power some of the ecosystem. Okay, so uh, so how, how are you specifically working with blockchain companies? Is it like um, enabling these um, uh, like ways to, to, to connect account or like to view uh, data? Like what are the different use yeah. cases that you're, you're seeing? There's, there are several. The first one that I mentioned is the account funding, right? Mm -hmm. So Plaid has the data and the endpoints to mm -hmm. be able to authorize a user to verify a user's identity mm -hmm. or to check the balance. So that's very useful when you're trying to fund an account mm -hmm. or fund a digital wallet. There's also a payments piece of this where there are certain parts of the ecosystem that uh, need to connect or touch to ACH rails or RTP rails in the United States. Um, Plaid has the ability to do that for select partners, mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the ways. It's, it's something that you know we don't often advertise. It's not something that's in the tenants, but it's very cool to see an infrastructure company behind the scenes to solve a lot of these challenges via APIs, via SDKs, mm -hmm. to prevent fraud, to help with identity verification, because mm -hmm. that's a massive challenge, right? Yeah. But we're, we're at the beginning stages, and I think it is through partnership, through partnership through Web2 and Web3 companies that we're going to see a lot of this drive forward, mm -hmm. and it's really just the beginning. So. To be at Plaid, I feel like we have a very solid foundation in a lot of these Web2 found the, the Web2 technology to, to be able to inevitably you know, help users where they are, meet users where they are, without taking a, a political or ideological stance from it. It's mm -hmm. just been what the market has done with it. Absolutely. Okay, and, and so what are the like potential use cases that you can see opening up for Plaid and crypto? Yeah, I think um, lending and credit is a mm. huge one. Uh, there, we've seen a lot of uh, increase in the ability to underwrite and look at users in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in the United States, having spent spending time living abroad and having many friends who were not born in the United States um, or moved later on, it's very challenging. Number one, to get a bank account mm -hmm. and to establish credit mm -hmm. in the United States, and there's been like whole populations of people that have been left out. That system also is not perfect. Plaid um, spun up and, and incorporated a credit reporting agency to be able to look at these insights mm -hmm. from the Plaid network. You know, one of the ways that we see this working in crypto and Web3, and one of the big reasons that I was attracted to working at Plaid is that until you can see digital asset data alongside traditional finance data, the usability is very limited. Mm. But what if you had DeFi staking or some sort of digital asset or even Bitcoin mm -hmm. held in a digital wallet or held on, held on Coinbase mm -hmm. and you could actually use the endpoints of which Plaid's able to do to be able to see that data from an investment standpoint and then FinTechs mm -hmm. um, can actually use that data to make crediting and underwriting decisions. Mm. So it's kind of bridging bridging the, the player, but it also requires other partners. Mm. That'd well. be super powerful. And yeah. also, um, you know, the, that credit piece and that identity piece to be able to plug it into a blockchain protocols because there's such a big piece missing in crypto, which is decentralized identity and yes. able to, uh, and, and for users to be able to, for example, take out um, uncollateralized loans. Because right. right now, like all of lending in DeFi is collateralized because you have no way of proving how like, how credit worthy you are and of like establishing your identity. That's right. So That's right. maybe like if blockchain companies can use Plaid for that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would welcome the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of exciting things in this space. And one of the great things about working in infrastructure, sometimes I often say that my customers, my partners are much smarter than I am and can come to me with use cases. So mm -hmm. I think it's great to be able to strategize and think about the ways that you can use products that Web2 companies have been using, that banks are using mm -hmm. to, to power different things, to keep things safer for the consumer, to keep mm -hmm. things very secure in that way. But I think it can unlock entire business models. Right. Yeah. So Plaid can sit it's like um, a data a connector that can sit between essentially Web 2 and Web 3. That's right? one way to look at it. Yeah, okay. certainly. certainly. And, it, and, and it can go like on both directions. So like it, right. can, it can go from like blockchain accounts to fintechs, or it, it, can, it, it can go uh, from like a Web 2 user account like and credit 
uh, ratings and so on to feed into into blockchain absolutely. protocols. Yeah, that's absolutely the capability mm -hmm. that's there, and things are being built out right mm -hmm. now um, to be able to power those things. But it takes it takes a lot of partnership, right? It's I often yeah. used to say, you know, blockchain's a team sport, but all of this, I think, in fintech partnerships is a team sport to mm -hmm. be able to stitch together different protocols, mm -hmm. different SDKs to be able to power the use case that you want to ultimately ultimately make it as easy as possible for the consumer um, mm -hmm. and, and for uh, an everyday person to be able to access new types of financial tools mm -hmm. that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. So I think it's all, it can all be towards the same mission and, and it can be helpful to use some of the pre-existing tools while we wait for the rest of the ecosystem to, to mm -hmm. build out. Do you think that uh, can, can Plaid become this bridge globally or would it be like US specific? I think, you know, Plaid's not interested in necessarily becoming the specific bridge. We power partners to become the bridge. So for mm. example, I was on uh, a panel with Marco from, from Bridge, who's the, the head of revenue there. Plaid, mm. Plaid powers Bridge. There's a number of other startups that, mm. that look at this. Um, bridge is top of mind, obviously, because I was just mm -hmm. speaking with Marco, um, to be able to, to get those account linking tools. Mm. So it's kind of like the picks and shovels of what you would need to build it. Mm. So not necessarily the global player that everyone will need to know, mm -hmm. just like if you are in the US connecting to your Venmo account mm -hmm. or to your Chime wallet, things like that. It's like you, you will see the, the user permissioning of Plaid come through and, and more, you know, one in every one in every four Americans has used Plaid, which is mm -hmm. a lot. I think it's most important in the US and most applicable in the US because the US has so many bank accounts mm -hmm. and that's where it's starting. Um, mm -hmm. I will say another thing that I've seen just this year as opposed to previously is folks are actually linking, uh, the, the big wallets are linking their wallet to a digital bank account. Mm -hmm. And that becomes very powerful. Mm -hmm. And you know, until we have things like stronger regulation and clear regulation, these are ways that we can work together as an ecosystem to empower the consumer to be able to move money more seamlessly, um, faster, cheaper than ever before. Cool, um, okay, and then, um, Going forward for for Plaid in crypto, uh, like what are some of the initiatives that you're working on? Like what what are you excited about in the coming months? Yeah, I would say I'm I'm very um, excited about what uh, Plaid lending and Plaid credit can mm -hmm. unlock for that mm -hmm. ecosystem. As I'd mentioned before, I think we've really just scratched the surface on some of the capabilities and what we can be able to do. Mm. Um, those are, and I would say, on identity verification. Mm. Really exciting. Uh, we launched a product called Layer, which allows you to do uh, identity verification via phone number. Mm. Much easier, much much better to do, to do onboarding. I think, I, I don't know about you, but as a user, constantly with FinTech apps, different bank accounts, crypto exchanges and wallets, I'm constantly just getting caught up in different 2FA protocols and trying to find passwords and, mm. and you, know, um, you know, back in the day, seed phrases, mm -hmm. right? Like I think I found a seed phrase notebook mm -hmm. from from many many years ago mm -hmm. and i think just it's it's great to see the ecosystem evolving and it's great to be alongside that from an infrastructure perspective because i get to see and work with many great ecosystems such as the stellar ecosystem mm -hmm. to be to be able to power the future and to make things better mm. awesome well thank you so much amy <laughs> Super thank you great talking too. with you yeah likewise. appreciate it